we defined GNNs by leveraging filters. Now that we have defined filter banks, we use them to define GNNs that process multiple features per layer. The output of a graph filter bank is a collection of multiple graph signals, something we represent with a matrix graph signal Z. Each of these columns is a graph signal varying from Z superscript 1 to Z superscript F. The collection of these F graph signals represents a collection of F features per node, a book with many pages, each of which is a graph signal. It equivalently signifies the presence of a vector ZI with F components supported at each node. We would like to process this graph signal with multiple features. More concretely, we would like to process it with a filter bank. Formally, for given input feature X superscript F, we consider a bank of capital J filters with coefficients HK annotated with superscripts F and G. These graph filters applied to signal XF produce an output signal UFG. The output signal depends on the input feature xf and the filter coefficients h, k, f, g. Since we have a total of f input features and each of them is processed with a filter bank containing g features, we have a total of f times g filters that are run in parallel to produce as many features. We call this structure a multiple input, multiple output filter, because we have both multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Using this MIMO filter in a GNN where we want to stack layers would lead to exponential growth in the number of features. This is not necessarily undesirable, but to exercise more control on the number of output features we reduce the number of outputs to capital G by summing across input features for a given G. In the diagram below, moving from left to right, we vary output features and moving from front to back, we vary input features. The outputs of our MIMO filters are signals ZG that sum the UFG features from front to back. This particular choice of sum to reduce the number of features at the output of a MIMO filter is more or less arbitrary, but it is chosen so that all input features are represented in all output features. For instance, output Z superscript 1 sums the intermediate outputs U superscript F, comma 1 for all F. Each of these UF1 outputs results from the processing of different input features XF with a different filter in the MIMO bank. The same is true of output Z2, which sums outputs UF2 for all input feature indexes. And for all other output features going up to the last output Z capital G. This description of MIMO filters makes them look difficult, but they are not. They are just cumbersome because they are simply a collection of F times G filters or a collection of F filter banks. We can make them easier if we represent them with matrix notation. To that end, let HK be a G times F matrix in which the entry in row F, column G, is the filter coefficient HKFG.
With this notation, the mimograph filter we just introduced can be written more compactly. The output is a matrix graph signal Z given by a sum of diffusion indexes K of powers of the shift operators multiplying the input signal in matrix form and multiplying the filter matrix HK. This is a more compact notation for the MIMOL filter, but it is equivalent. If you need help seeing that the definitions are indeed equivalent, just expand the matrices. When we do that, we see that the graph filter output CG has the same expression we covered some seconds ago. This is just algebra, there's no point in doing it here. What matters is the expression for a mimograph filter, in which an input matrix signal X with F features is processed to produce an output matrix signal Z with G features. The form of the filter is reminiscent of a polynomial on the shift operator S in that it contains powers of this matrix. The coefficients of a MIMO filter are not a set of scalar lowercase hk, but a set of g times f matrices, uppercase hk, that multiply from the right. This structure is equivalent to a set of f filter banks with g filters each. The matrix representation of MIMO filters is convenient for implementations. The filter bank representation is convenient for analysis and understanding. In a story that should by now sound very familiar, we can build a MIMO GNN by stacking MIMO perceptrons. MIMO perceptrons which, in turn, we build by composing MIMO filters with pointwise nonlinearities. The procedure is the same we used to build a GNN out of a single input, single output graph filters. Layer L of the GNN processes the output of the previous layer, XL minus 1. This is a matrix graph signal with multiple features. At layer L, this output plays the role of an input. The input is processed with the MIMO perceptron HL. This MIMO perceptron is the composition of a MIMO filter with a pointwise nonlinearity. The coefficients of this MIMO filter are matrices HLK. The result of this processing is the output of the layer XL. This is also a matrix graph signal with multiple features. Agreeing, as we did before, that the input to layer 1, which is the given signal X, be reinterpreted as the output of the non-existent layer 0, the equation above provides a recursive definition of a MIMO GNN. We are writing the input to the GNN as a matrix graph signal with multiple features, but it is allowed to have inputs with single features. Indeed, it is often the case. The output of the MIMO GNN is the result of stopping the recursion after L iterations. Again, we are writing the output as a matrix graph signal with multiple features but it is allowable to have outputs with single features. The MIMO GNN is a function class phi that is parameterized by the shift operator S and the set of filters capital H1 through capital HL. We define the filter tensor calligraphic H to write the MIMO GNN with more compact notation. The filter tensor H is the trainable parameter of the GNN the graph shift is prior information. This description of a MIMO GNN is more or less the same description we gave of GNNs and fully connected neural networks. The only change is the use of MIMO graph filters. We see the same in this block diagram of a MIMO GNN with three layers. It's the same diagram except that layers have MIMO perceptrons. But, as in the case of the GNN and the FCNN, 
we begin by feeding the input graph signal x to layer 1. This could be a signal with multiple features. We denote the number of features as F0. The signal is processed with a MIMO graph filter with matrix coefficients H1K. This MIMO graph filter produces an internal output Z1. This is a signal which can possibly have a different number of features. We will denote this number of features as F1. The output of the MIMO filter is now sent through a pointwise nonlinearity. The output of the pointwise nonlinearity is the multiple feature signal X1. This completes layer 1. The output of layer 1 is now fed as an input to layer 2. This is a signal with F1 features, we recall. In layer 2, the signal is processed by a MIMO filter with coefficients H2K to produce an internal output Z2, which we feed to a pointwise nonlinear function to produce the signal X2. This completes the layer, and X2 is declared to be the output of layer 2. This is a signal with F2 features. The output of layer 2 is now fed as an input to layer 3, where it is processed with a MIMO filter with coefficients H3K to produce internal output Z3, which we process with a pointwise nonlinear function sigma to produce the signal X3. This completes layer 3. The signal X3 at the output of layer 3 is declared to be the output of the MIMO GNN. The output is parameterized by the filter tensor calligraphic H, grouping the MIMO filters of all layers. This is the trainable parameter of the MIMO GNN. The MIMO GNN is the workhorse of machine learning on graphs.